Goldilocks Bears podcast with Vincent Cloud. John Nennitz. And David Lauer. And this is the show where we talk about loves, hates, and differences. Uh, things we're on the fence about, the gray areas in life. Uh, things we're torn, uh, torn apart by, like horses. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Drawn and quartered about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah save the good meats but uh but before we do that though we talk about old meat meat that we should have thrown <laughs> out and that's uh old topics in the segment we call the Desha fuse take it away dave uh i have a topic and it's that time of year it's you know getting to be the it's in august almost towards fall and that means football is coming up and vince i know you hate fantasy football but I love fantasy football. Ah, okay. So uh, I just like reactivated my league. Uh, we had like 14 people in it. Vince, you're a former member of the league yes. um, until you decided that you hate it so much that you didn't want to be a part of it anymore because <laughs> you hate fun. No, no, no. Because the one season I did, I ended up getting like a third and the money was given right back to me. I'm like, what? it's like it never happened. I don't know. And I let you guys take over a lot of my decisions. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I, I like I, I adopted your like little hobo child from the street, your <laughs> team, and I took it under my wing and I carried it to third place. You should be proud of me. Wow. Um, I love fantasy football. I just think it's well. I love it. Okay, so you can actually look at the calendar, and that is like a gauge of how much I love it. So like August, September, October, I love it. November, I'm indifferent to it. I just, it's like the middle of the season, and I want it to be over. December, like once it's the playoffs, I fucking hate it. I just never want to play fantasy football again. And then I'm just hate fantasy football until all of a sudden this time of year comes around again and then suddenly i love it again and i just kind of punish myself every year with fantasy football but so uh, la- how does that work then like when the nfl is getting into the playoffs and like you might have a lot of players that are in teams that aren't playing anymore right is that how that works um so the way it works is fantasy football will just be like the first 13 games of the season or 13 weeks and there's like 17 or 18 weeks of the nfl season so then we'll just do our regular season for the first 13 games and then like weeks 14 15 16 and 17 those four weeks we'll do our playoffs so then that way by the time the nfl playoffs actually start we're done with fantasy football so that, yeah, because otherwise, you know, half the teams are not going to make it to the playoffs and you're not going to be able to use any of those players. Um, you've won a couple times, haven't you? I am the current reigning champion. Oh, my, my God. League. <laughs> um, yeah, I've. Can we see I've your played, trophy? <laughs> I, I don't have a trophy. I'm the manager of the league. So everyone's just like, Dave, you cheated. You're, you're in charge. You <laughs> must have cheated. And I'm like, no, I'm like, I, like my team wasn't even that good. It was just every team I played in the playoffs just had a terrible week. And I was like, oh, I guess I move on because the person <laughs> I played did terrible. And then it happened three times in a row. And I'm like, oh, I'm champion. Even though like none of my, like my team wasn't that great, but that's just kind of how it works sometimes. Like sometimes you just need to not be bad. You know, being good isn't even necessary. Um, but it's just it's random and it just it gives you something to pay attention to like during like football games that you normally wouldn't care about suddenly like you're rooting for someone and against someone it's got all the same properties as like uh sports gambling in a way yeah yeah well uh, i don't i can't remember uh john have you fantasized about leagues and i never have played in one um my former coworkers at a place that like we all used to work but nobody works there anymore still have a league together and sometimes i'll go like on draft night just to hang out but i have like zero responsibilities there which is nice um and that's been fun but yeah that's that's the extent of my involvement the draft is fun but then at the same time it isn't like like immediately i remember 
they're like, okay, Vince, you get to choose. I'm like, I want this. And they're like, no one chooses a quarterback in the whatever, you know, I'm like, what the fuck is this now? Like everyone was like, that's not how you do it. And I'm like, well, I don't care. This is a, this is fantasy. Holy shit. Like, let me choose whoever, but I don't know. Immediately people are like, you don't, you don't choose two quarterbacks or whatever it was. It was wrong, apparently. So right away, I'm like, oh, this fucking sucks. <laughs> well, these days, can you ask, like, chat GPT what you should do, and then you oh. just let them manage your league? Oh, I'm I'm sure. Yeah. Like, there's apps that you can get on your phone, um, and it will sync up with, like, the ESPN or Yahoo app that's, like, you're running your team on. It will sync up to it, and it will tell you, like you should draft this player or you should draft this player. And it kind of like walks you through it. Um, and there's always like projections and they tell you like, Oh, you should take this person or this person. Um, and they're almost, they're always wrong. Like if you've played a lot of fantasy football, like, yeah, you, there's different tiers of players. Like these five guys are the best guys. Then after that, there's a group of like another, like 10 players that are really great. And then there's another group of 10 players, but like out of those different tiers, no one's really better or worse because it's so random. You don't know who's going to get hurt. Um, even if that player doesn't get hurt, if his teammates around him get hurt and he's playing with subpar teammates and the team is bad, then that player won't be as good. And there's just so much randomness to it that, like, you do have to stick with some certain things. You only need one quarterback. You don't really need to take more than that. You don't need you to don't take a pick kicker. your quarterback first. Yeah, you, like you could, but <laughs> it's not one. smart. Yeah, uh, don't take a kicker until it's like the last round or second to last round. Like stockpile running backs, you're gonna like you're gonna go through them a lot of them. But, uh, the the yeah. last time I was at a draft though, Dave, uh, I th I think you were there, but you know, typically a draft you have the board and you know you have physical pieces of paper or names or something like that. But the last time I went. It was all on your guys' phones. So I wasn't even going to draft. I was just there to hang out, eat food or whatever. But you guys were just on your phones during that draft. I'm like, this sucks. <laughs> like the, I don't know. The league has slowly been pushing me away. I'm like, oh, fine. I wasn't even interested well, that much to begin yeah, with. Yeah, like the actual physical boards. People used to have like a giant marker board or a chalkboard. Or, like, yeah, you can go to Hobby Lobby and get, like, a bunch of, like, construction paper and, like, write every every player. Like, but, to like, do we want to take the time to write down 200 different football players or 120 names and then stick it on a board? It's, like, it's easier to just do it digitally on your phone. Like, they used to do it, like, the old-fashioned way back in the 90s and the early 2000s, but... I mean, you'd really have to be like, I'm not a fantasy football nut like that where you have to do all that stuff. Um, like part of me would like to do that, but I live far away from everybody from the league for the most part. So I'm not going to travel up there for a NFL draft or a fantasy football draft, but I would love to do that. And like, if I had the money, I would also get like a, you know, a championship belt or a trophy or something like that. But Eh, we just we just play fifty dollars a person, and there's like between ten to fourteen teams in the league, you know, just depending on who wants to be in it that year. Um, the show, the league. Uh, I believe I self-identify as Taco because we're like he's really not even doing anything. He's just they needed a like an eighth guy or something. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, I was I was uh, I'm Taco, but uh, who are you? Are you um? Uh, I'm not Ruxin. Definitely not Ruxin. Ruxin I'm, yeah. No, I'm... Who, who's the bald guy? Andre? Uh, Andre, yeah. Are I'm probably Andre. Andre. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm really good, but I'm also, like, I'll do stuff that's a little off the wall. And John is... I, uh, I identify with Rafi. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> wow. Rafi. Wow. That was so random. All was right. it the beard? <laughs> <laughs> the bro, though. Bro, oh my gosh. Yeah, right. that show was great. Like, they need to bring it back or do some kind of spinoff. Like, there's... I don't know. There's more potential to be pulled out of that idea. For sure. And all those guys are cool, except for that one guy who lied about being at 9-11. <laughs> 
<laughs> Remember that shit? Yeah, that was weird. Yeah, that guy. Who's that? Uh, he's got Steve the... Renazzisi. I don't. I don't remember the names. He's the. Uh, I feel like it would be Steve Renazzisi, but I don't know. He's like Ta- a stand-up comedian. The brother of Taco, Taco's brother, right? Yeah. Yeah, that yeah. guy. Yeah, he lied about. Okay, yeah, that's so weird. I could see that. <laughs> that seems like his personality. Like yeah, I wouldn't okay. believe anything he says. He's the kind of guy who would lie about being in nine eleven. I do it. All right, let's uh, let's get the show started. A. Eh? Um, yeah, I'm not eh? sure who's supposed to start, so I'll just do it. How about that? Whoa. Um, you know what? Let's talk about my hate. I hate the appendix. Why? Because it's useless, apparently. But I didn't know that then. I mean, use, being useless is fine, Vince right? loves the index. He loves the table of contents. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So right off the bat, my introduction to the appendix is a burst one. We almost lost my little baby brother. Like, I don't know. Was he six years old? Something like that. All of a sudden, he's just like, ah, like in pain, terrible pain. And we rushed him to the hospital and they were like, oh my God, uh, yeah, appendicitis or whatever. You know, we got to cut that out of there. And they were like, yeah, we, we could have lost them. And I'm like, Jesus Christ, what the fuck? And then I later find out that it does nothing in your body and it could randomly just go off and fucking possibly kill you. That is horrible. I hate that so much. And I have this question. Why do we not have it removed shortly after birth? Like a circumcision or something. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think just because any surgery, however minor, does impose some sort of risk. And I feel like when for infants especially you don't have like a very good immune system yet so the the chance of infection is probably a lot higher all right but but you get what i'm saying though like maybe at one years old or two or something well it's like oh i i think my my mom said that like she both my sister and i were born um cesarean and she said, like, while they were in there, they just, like, took her appendix out. Like, why not? <laughs> really? Yeah. Uh, Sounds like while Dr. we're in Zoyberg. the neighborhood, might as well. <laughs> we'll took out your appendix, why not? <laughs> he eats it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So, uh, yeah, what do you guys think about the appendix? Uh, any other thoughts? I mean, Dave. I hate mine so think? much, I don't have one anymore. I, uh... I was in college. It was freshman year. Oh, say no more. (laughs) (laughs) Um, I it was finals week of the first semester. Oh my god, that's like the most stressful (laughs) week ever. (laughs) Yeah, I've I've felt horrible physically. Like, um, you know, it got to the point where like I couldn't like hold down any food. I was like hunched over in pain um and i i went to the the local clinic and they like told me something like oh yeah you just have the flu and they gave me like a an injection a shot of some sort in my bum (laughs) and sent me on my way and like i felt like great for like you know a day like I was eating meals and stuff and like, you know, I, I felt really good. And then it, that wore off, whatever it was, I don't even know. <laughs> Should figure that out. But, yeah. um, you know, I had, been, I had other stuff going on at the time. Um, then like, I'm trying to remember the, the whole chain of events. At some point I went to the, just like the campus uh, health center and they're like, bro, that's your appendix. You need to, like, get that removed. Like, so how how this, like, little rinky-dink campus health center came to that conclusion and the clinic didn't? I don't know. <laughs> but, like, um, like, I had finished all my finals and everything, and um, I was going to... Drew and I were carpooling back to Nielsville, and um, he just, like, dropped me off at the ER and called my parents. <laughs> And they're like, oh, yeah, that's your appendix. And um, 
it like literally like ruptured while I was waiting for surgery. Um, cause like it like quit hurting at that point. And so I think that's maybe how people like die from it. Cause it's like after it ruptures, you don't feel the pain anymore. Oh my God. So then you're just like moving on with your life. Meanwhile, you have like, you know, <laughs> feces spilling out into your insides. Oh shit. Uh, yeah, people um, are like, I've been in this waiting room for six hours, but <laughs> my stomach doesn't hurt anymore. Maybe I can just go home. Yeah. And then they exactly. die. <laughs> Jesus. But yeah, so that had the uh um the interaction with the anesthesiologist where they're like, Oh, count backwards from ten, and you're like, What? Ten? That's not enough numbers, and then like next thing you're like waking up. And that's where I learned about my uh my allergy that i mentioned last time to morphine yeah but the painkiller they put me on while i was under um yeah so you can't get high like michael kane in the cider house rules <laughs> that? he would just every night he would like <laughs> breathe in that morphine was nuts it's like good night you kings of new england <laughs> <What is> that? <laughs> that's weird uh, Dave, have you have do you have an appendix within you right now? Uh, yes, I do, and it's like a literal ticking time bomb. Where like anytime <laughs> I eat too much pizza or barbecue, and then I have like an abdomen pain on my right lower side, I'm just like, oh god, is this, is this <laughs> is it happening? Is it, is it, my time has come, and I'm just like waiting for it to happen because. Uh, my dad had his appendix taken out when he was eh, probably like in middle school or something like 12 or 13. Um, I still have mine, but my wife, Brooke, she had hers taken out and it was like the first year that we were dating. Um, she's just like said she had lower abdomen pain and I was like a female lower abdomen pain. I'm like, it was probably your time of the month or something. <laughs> or I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> oh my just get some wine i'll take a nap it'll be better that was my medical advice to her and then she's like no i think i need to go to the hospital and i was like uh that's expensive like are you sure <laughs> and i was like maybe you just have like a ovarian cyst or something like yeah maybe just yeah, get like an ultrasound or something <laughs> but she went and and got a cat scan and they're like this was on the fourth of july actually she's like She's like, just drop me off. And then I was going to my dad's place and we were going to go fishing because it was the 4th of July. So I dropped my wife, or not my wife, my girlfriend at the time at the ER. And then I went fishing with my dad. And then I get like a text message later and she's like, all right, they're prepping me for surgery. And I'm like, what? I'm like, oh shit, I was wrong. It was her appendix. And uh, so like after the surgery, like five or five, four or five days later, she's running super high fevers. Uh, she still has abdomen pain. And they're like, well, if you still have a fever, we're going to have to do another CAT scan to make sure you don't have an abscess. And they do another scan. And I looked at it because I work in x ray at the hospital. So I'm looking at her scan and I'm like, I've never since then seen a scan where she had so many abscesses, just collections of, uh, bacterial fluid and pus in her abdomen like on the report it said multiple clusters of abscesses and like one was in the shape of a banana one was like in the shape of like tomatoes like on a vine together where there's like three different globs like all, the, all the runts candies <laughs> yeah <laughs> and like my first thing was like what did this surgeon do and the, like was I thought like, oh, was her appendix ruptured and all that bacteria got everywhere? But no, like according to the surgeon, it wasn't ruptured. So he just did a really crappy job with the surgery and was super messy with it. And then she had to get like a drain put in to like all that uh, bacteria filled fluid. So she had to have like a tube coming out of her abdomen for like a month where it was just draining out fluid um and it was it was awful like and th that's actually how i knew that my wife was so amazing she was going through all this terrible stuff and she was like a trooper like she was she was not super whiny about it she was just like ah this sucks it's such an inconvenience but whatever like she didn't let it get to her 
And I was just like, oh, then she has like such a like a mental toughness to her. And I'm like, it was like I knew that it was like a green flag. I was like, okay, she's just <laughs> tough. <laughs> All right, here's a question. Let's say the there was the perfect girl, but she has to use a colostomy bag. Is that a deal breaker for you? <sighs> yeah, if I have to like <laughs> If I have to like burp her fart bag <laughs> and like it's getting full, I need another bag. <laughs> oh, I think that is a deal breaker. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, how, how perfect? <laughs> <laughs> there, because there are levels. <laughs> yeah. My, I, uh, my recovery went much more smoothly than that. My my most traumatic thing was the the doctor told me like um, you know once you're uh, able to pass gas let someone know and then we can start putting you on like regular food again or whatever and um, so I that happens for the first time and I'm like excited to like be able to eat something so I ring the the buzzer and. Of course, it's like a the a, the nurse who comes in is like this pretty lady, so <laughs> I have to like be like, I have gas. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow! And she's like, and I have a colostomy bag. <laughs> <laughs> oh god! Um, so so yeah, I I why aren't we just taking them out? If it's so goddamn risky, that's that's outrageous. I mean, although I don't want to go into surgery because, you know? well, yeah. basically because of what happened to my wife. Because if you go in and take it out, you can when you cut like your large intestine or small intestine, there's so much bacteria in our gut that if any of that gets loose into your abdominal cavity you can just like go septic and you'll have an infection. And if it goes untreated, you can die from it. So that's why like, if somebody gets like stabbed or shot in the abdomen and it hits your intestines, it's super dangerous. Cause then you just have that fecal matter, like leak into your abdominal cavity and then your body, it, it can kill you basically so, from the infection. So that's why you're like, please in the head. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, uh, 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 segue challenge. Yeah, I feel like this Let's topic is about the to burst. Uh, worthless appendage <laughs> that is this topic. <laughs> uh, whoever wants to go next has the floor. Um, I can go with my hate, keep it going, and it's on topic how frail our bodies are. Nah. Um, so this. My appendix story I just told is an example of my frail body failing me. Um, also, like, I had written this down a while ago in my list, but, you know, our, our discussion of um, allergies also fits into this topic, how you can be taken out by a peanut or whatever. Um, but, you know, really, I was thinking of just, like, even minor stuff, like... Um, you know, I'm I'm a guy who works with computers, and I feel like every time I work with anything physical, like if I have to do like a minor like appliance or car repair, or like even when we have to go into our computer lab and like physically rack machines onto the shelf or something, like I'm always bleeding by the end of it somehow. <laughs> like I scrape my knuckle on something or, you know, so something always happens. Um, and now like we're getting older and our, our bodies are failing us in additional ways where like um, a couple winters ago, our my garage door opener quit working, like the mechanical mechanism. So until I could get that fixed, I had to, you know, physically lift the door up. And doing that one time, I tweaked my back the wrong way and just had like the, my back spasming repeatedly for like the the next like three days where like even driving was painful. Like if I was sitting there going straight, it was fine. But just the act of like turning the steering wheel was enough to make my like back spasm into like an intense 
excruciating pain. Um, it's just, you know, so much, so much stuff that can, uh, take us out and, you know, one day it's going to be something that takes us out permanently. So, um, I don't, I don't got a solution, but I, I'm not happy with the, the status quo. <laughs> uh, Dave, what do you got? Uh, yeah, I like, I agree. It's, I work at a hospital and like i hear from patients every day they're like it sucks getting old don't get old <laughs> and i'm like don't get old i'm like there's only one way to not get old and i don't want to do that so it's like you know you're you're lucky to get old you know if you can um but yeah it there's definitely i <laughs> like I feel like myself, I feel very fortunate because I feel like my body has done very well because I do like little to no maintenance on my body. I don't <laughs> work out. Um, I don't eat particularly well. Like I try to portion control, um, but like I like I still will eat McDonald's or like I eat fast food, like I don't know, three times, four times a week. Like I still will eat, go to the cafeteria at my hospital and I'll get like not healthy food there. It's a um, hospital. And... They must have only healthy food. <laughs> Dude, they took away the salad bar during COVID because well, they're like, it's too dangerous. And then they just never brought it back. Uh. They're like, no, no more salads, guys. Uh, so yeah, it's just like, okay, we have a chicken fried steak covered in white gravy and mashed <laughs> potatoes. There you go. It's just like, it's just like a salty, greasy mess. So um, odd. but I feel like, I feel like, I don't know. I feel like I'm very lucky in that matter, but it does feel like, you know, all our, all of our bodies are kind of a ticking time bomb where <laughs> something's going to break. And I do feel very frail in some ways because anytime I have to like go outside and like try and do some physical labor, yeah, like my knuckles are bleeding. I cut my leg. I have like a scab on my leg where I had a blister. I don't even know how I got a blister on my leg, like what it was from, but I ended up with a blister and then now it's scabbed over and it looks, I don't know. It, I just, I have all these weird things happen to me. Um, I pinched my hand. I was moving some cinder blocks and I pinched my hand. And now I just have like, this was like a month ago, but I have like a permanent discoloration to my <laughs> hand and it's just there. And I'm just like a permanent bruise. Yeah. The, uh, the age, I think I, yeah, I mentioned my ankle twisting my ankle plenty of times, uh, on the show, but that was crazy because it didn't heal. It took a year to heal. You, you, like, that's not how it usually goes. But then I'm thinking, like, well, when was the last time it happened? I was, like, almost 10 years ago, you know? Uh, so, uh, obviously, my body can deal with things. But now it's just different. Now it's fucking, oh, my God. Like, I was trying to do a pull-up, and I did something to my back. My back was weird, for a long time and it just uh happened to have um this thing at at work where like we're going to show you how to uh hold place a hold on a client if a client's getting out of hand and you simply do this and so the boss was showing them on on me and she had to like lift me slightly I'm like oh my back feels so much better now <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, I was, I was, I was resigning myself to be like oh this is just how my back is I'm old you know it it's so annoying. It's something, it's a reminder that, yeah, you're fucking, you're in a body horror movie. <laughs> you know? I, I hate, I hate, uh, um, I hate my ankles because they could give up on me so quickly and stuff. And, and it's like, you know, once it goes, it's just easier to go after that and easier and easier. So it's like, that sucks. And for the longest time, I'm like, I've always prided myself on not being sick, but I, holy shit, I was sick for a long time. We had to take a break from the, the podcast because I had this cough that just wasn't going away. It was nuts. So it's all different now, now that I'm my age 
and I'm not looking too forward to the other stuff, <laughs> you know, <laughs> even though it's a part of life. Like, I don't want to die early, even though I grew up thinking, I want to die at 40 so I don't get old. Well, fucking 40 is like two months from now, and I don't want to die. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> um, but uh, I had to bring up real quick the um, some UFC stuff. The liver shot is fucked up. Like, if you get hit just well enough, your whole body just shuts down, and you collapse, and you're in such pain. And some people, you know, after a while, you're like, why isn't everyone just shooting the liver you know what i mean oh, it's God. fucking nuts uh, and then this new detail about the human body the calf kick all of a sudden i don't know when it started it might have been started by rda against nate diaz that really popularized it where they're like holy shit if you kick that calf more often than not like it just like it shuts down as well like you're um what did they describe it as? Like the muscle kind of detaches or something like um, it's, fu it's a new weapon in the UFC is the calf kick. Uh, Dave, do you know anything about that? I mean, do you know a anything whole lot, medically? I, um, like there are some, like the nerves that run down the back of your calf. Like, I think it happened to like Henry Cejudo when he fought, I think, uh, Mighty Mouse, Demetrius Johnson, he got kicked in the back of the calf, and then it, like, shut off the nerves to his foot. Oh, yeah. So then, like, his foot and his ankle were just kind of dangling, like his, like his foot was asleep, and he couldn't, like, properly step down on it or move his foot for a couple minutes, and then, luckily, like, the round was over, and he was able to sit on the stool and, like, get some feeling back into his foot. But yeah, it like literally just shut off the feeling to his lower leg. So messed up. Yeah. Human the human body. Is, is that something up. that like comes back on its own? Like after the fight? Like, yeah. It's like like it's... I, I just hate the idea of like a UFC fight where you're purposely doing something that like requires surgery or you know what I mean? Like that sounds horrible. Well, like, yeah, with. Oh, sorry. I was going like, to say really quick the oblique kick, right? Wasn't there a lot of people that were like, we should outlaw that because it, it's a kick to the obliques, <laughs> but it's like, it's it'll fuck up your knee really bad. Like, it could do some serious damage that will last a long time. Yeah. Um, I don't know if it's banned, though. I, I remember them talking about it, though. Yeah, it's not banned. Um, there was a guy recently just in a fight like a couple weeks ago. I forget who it was. But yeah, he's just doing a kick. Kind of that oblique kick right to like the front of the guy's knee or right at the just like a slight angle of it. And it basically just kind of buckles your knee uh. in. And it can just tear your ligaments in your knee. And like, yes, it's, it's super cruel because it's just like you're not going to win a fight by doing it. But you could, if you injure your opponent and then they can't really walk on that leg, like then you could win a fight. But it's it's just like it's so dirty. Ugh. That's John Jones' move, man. That in the eye post. It is. This fucking asshole. <laughs> uh, a pocket full of sand. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, a segue challenge. Uh. Hmm. Let's uh, <laughs> uh, kick let's, this uh, topic in the obliques. <laughs> okay, I was, yeah, I was gonna say let's put some ice. Put this one on ice. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> uh, I believe Dave has the floor, the dance floor. Uh, I will talk about my love. We're gonna kind of switch topics here. Um, oh, my love is <laughs> is a band. Uh, band is called the Avit Brothers. I love the Avett Brothers. They're one of my favorite bands. Um, Avett Brothers have been around since like the year 2000. They have like an insane catalog of music. Um, I generally, like I first started to listen to them in like 2011, I believe. So they had already been around for like 10 years at that point. So they had like five or six albums out. Now they probably have like 13 albums. Um, they have live albums. Um, but the Avett Brothers, it's, 
Seth Avitt and Scott Avitt, and they're the, you know, they're brothers. And then there's a couple other guys in the band, like Bob Crawford and Joe Kwan. And they, those guys, they play, it's like an Americana, like folk rock band, like bluegrass. Um, like both the Avitt brothers themselves, they both sing and they take turns. Like they'll both sing in like every song. And then they both write all the songs. Um, they both play guitar. Uh, Scott plays like the banjo. Seth plays, I think, the violin, possibly. Um, they, I think they play a little piano as well. Um, I thought I thought they called it a fiddle. If it's bluegrass, right? Yeah, <laughs> like, probably. Well, that ain't no violin. That's a fiddle. <laughs> yeah, it might be. They're from uh, they're from South Carolina. Um. I love, I personally love like their older music because it's a lot more folksy, bluegrass style. As time has gone on, they're a little bit more pop ish. And I don't even know that they're really pop, but they're just more produced. They're a lot more heavily produced with their newer stuff. Um, but I just, they're such a great band. I've seen them live three times. I've seen them at Madison, uh, Madison, Wisconsin. At like one of the soccer fields, it was just like outside in a soccer field, and it was awesome. Uh, I saw him in Green Bay, Wisconsin, with at the Reich Center, which is like a basketball arena. Um, and even Aaron Rodgers like came out and did like a cameo at the end. <laughs> uh, wow. It was pretty cool at the time because Aaron Rodgers was like hurt that football season. Uh, he broke his collarbone, but then, like, all of a sudden, he showed up, and it was like, oh, he raised his arm in the air. I think his shoulder's okay. <laughs> he's like, so was, he, gets, he gets on the mic. He's like, the body's pretty frail, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And he, Aaron Rodgers came out with a guitar, and we're like, oh, shit, this is such an Aaron Rodgers thing to do. He's going to start playing the guitar for everyone. But, no, he just, like, took the guitar and handed it to Scott, and we're like, Oh, okay. Like I thought you were gonna play it. He passed. I was it. imagining that's what, that's what quarters quarterbacks do. They pass things. <laughs> uh, that's true. I was imagining um, the the spy from the disability insurance company running out and be like, "If he can hold a guitar, he can throw a football." <laughs> He's faking yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> get on the field. <laughs> <laughs> and then I saw the Avett brothers in. Uh, Denver, Colorado at Red Rocks, which is like an iconic music venue because it's just outside of Denver and you can oversee like the entire city. And there was like, there's like lightning and like storms off in the distance. So like we weren't getting rained on, but you could just see lightning off in the distance. And it was just like the coolest place ever. Oh, that's awesome. I've, I've been to that venue just like during the day, but I've never actually seen a show there. Yeah, it's it's super cool. I would I would definitely recommend going um see the Avett brothers there cuz they legit every July, I swear for like the last 10 years, they'll play a couple uh a couple of nights every like July or August. Just look at like Red Rocks basically, like they're packed like during the summer. They have bands are there all the time and Avett brothers always try to show up there cuz they have tons of fa uh fans in Denver. Um there's like there's so many songs. I really love this band because they just have like such a large collection of music and songs that I love. Um, a lot of their albums are great. There's like I'm gonna list off some of my favorite songs, like six of them here. But none of these songs are like mainstream. If you look at like their biggest hits, none of my favorite songs are even biggest hits. They're all like deep cuts, like on the albums where nobody really quite knows them. And I've only like a few of these I've heard on like at their concerts, but they have like watching them live. It's amazing because there's always so many songs that they can play from, from their catalog that you might not always hear. Um, but some of my favorite songs are pretty girl from Annapolis, the lowering shame, November blue. If it's the beaches, famous flower from manhattan um i was the the concert i went to in madison they did an encore and they played like one of their hit songs for the first song of the encore and then the final song they played if it's the beaches 
which is like a super deep cut for all like the OG fans. <laughs> and like none of the, it was mostly college kids there. So they're all like wanted to hear their newer music. But when they started playing that, most of the people didn't know what it was, and they just started turning around and leaving. What? But it was like me, <laughs> and it was like me and like twenty percent of the people there were all like, "This is insane! I've never heard them play this song before." And it's just like the most beautiful song ever. And it's just like it's just like him and a guitar, and that's it. And he's just singing the song, and it's just like a it's like a real song that a dude would play, just him and his guitar about like a relationship that went wrong and that's that's what like most of their songs are all about is just like relationships and like feelings and feelings of shame or like regret um just any kind of human emotion they put it into their music and there's they have happy stuff but they have tons of sad stuff so like if you're in like a bad mood or like in a sad mood there's so many good songs you can listen to there's a but, bit uh, yeah it, it... Is there a bit uh, some Christianity themes or in there a little bit? I don't like because there was like, this uh, one song. Yeah, there are a couple songs where they reference God, um, but like overall, I'd say no. Like I think technically they're both Christian, but not a lot of that makes it into their music, other than saying like they'll say like they thank God uh, that I met you. Or thank God that I found you. Or like a lyric in a song like that, but nothing much more than that. Of course, the you in both of those cases is Jesus Christ, their savior. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, well, well, I listened to it, uh, or, you know, this was just random songs, whatever it was on a YouTube. There was like a mix, so I just pressed play and listened to that. But yeah, I, I liked it. Um, the uh, uh b -b -b what is it called the banjo not the banjo yeah yeah banjo yeah that that sounded nice to me um i think i it, like this more just because i've been listening to the eagles and that's like southern kind of folksy country twinged or whatever so i i didn't mind this a avid brothers i heard this one song <clears throat> i don't remember I didn't write anything down, but one of the songs I was like, did Dave recommend this before? Cause I've heard this <laughs> before. Like it was, yeah. And I liked it. Um, and yeah, it, it's, uh, you know, the sadder songs, it kind of reminds me of like a, a little bit, the emo indie, like death cat for cutie sort of stuff. Like if I'm in a sad mood, I want to be sad with yeah. those guys. Yeah. I, I see that totally. Um, I did have a question though. Do you do you get into behind the scenes? Like, do you know if the Avid brothers hate each other? Like, Oasis Gallagher <laughs> brothers. <laughs> um, like, I think they're really good now, as far as I know. But there was definitely periods where, because Scott is four years older than Seth, and Scott is a little bit shorter. Seth is a little bit more traditionally taller, handsome. He would have longer hair. So he was like, so it started off being the Avett brothers, but like Scott, the shorter, older guy, he was the lead singer kind of. But then Seth started to write more and more stuff. He started to have more songs. And then I think he grew in popularity. And I feel like there was a little bit of like tension there, but I think they worked through it. And like, I don't know how much really ever made it into their music i don't think there was much tension in the music but i think stylistically they they really sound well together but stylistically they do have a little bit of a different style where like instrumentally they play a little bit different stuff and then like their writing of their songs is really i think the bigger difference because i think scott got married first and seth was uh like, Scott was originally, like, a ladies' man and would always have all these songs about, like, Pretty Girl from Annapolis or Pretty Girl from Michigan, Pretty Girl from Chile. Like, there was every album would have a pretty girl from so-and-so that he'd met and written a song about. But then he got married, and then I think Seth was still single, so then Seth would have more of, like, the romanticizing nature to his songs. But now they're both married, as far as I know. Um 
And I don't know, like Vince, we've talked about this with bands where like when guys are writing for a band and they're single and they're young, their music is always better because they have like more source material because they're like on the road and they're like trying to find themselves, but they're trying to find someone else. But then like once you're married and you have kids and you settle down, you don't have as many life experiences anymore. You've that you're kind of putting that person in your past and moving on to a new chapter in your life. And it's like, it kind of affects their music and it's not quite the same anymore. Ooh. I wonder if Taylor Swift is actually in fear of a good solid relationship. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Is Travis Kelsey, is she really going to settle for him or is she going to kick him to the curb? Yeah. <laughs> uh. Uh, John, did you? Uh, are you an avid brother? You look like one. Holy shit! Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, the handsome one, of course, right? Yes. Um, yeah, you do look more like Seth. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I've never purposely listened to them before, but I I did what Vince did and just put on the the recommended mix. And I wish I also wish I would have written stuff down because I was like, oh, I've heard this song before. I've heard that song before. Um, it's definitely the kind of stuff that they would play on The Current, which is a radio station here that's like, um, it's like public radio, but they play like indie music and stuff. Um, it definitely reminded me of our conversation earlier where we were talking about country music and how like now Americana has emerged as the genre, which is country music that doesn't suck. And <laughs> yeah, this is... <laughs> definitely in in that that camp like i liked a lot of the stuff and i have a buddy who listens to a lot of americana stuff and um i'd be surprised if he doesn't have some of their albums um oh uh are you in uh, is the avid brothers an album band if you know what i'm saying like or are they more like singles you yeah know i was I mean? gonna ask that too because that's like i approach music way better through albums than individual songs i would say this. i would say they are kind of album however i feel like their older albums were better their newer albums feel more like albums where like everything has a similar sound and a similar style so like their most recent album everything like you can tell like okay they were going for this style for this album and everything kind of fits together in a in its place um, but their older albums, which I love more, they kind of go a little bit in every direction on those albums. And I kind of like that because I like a little bit more variety. Um, but it's, I don't like, but there's definitely like, even in their, my favorite albums of theirs, there's duds. Like there are songs that are just duds. Um, it's kind of like the Beatles white album where they, they put <laughs> too many songs on an album. And, like, you kind of know where you're like, okay, that's that's not a good one. Like, you shouldn't even put that in there. But they did. Like, they would have albums that would be, you know, 16 or 17 songs on it. And it's like, it should have been 11 or 12. Um, Yeah, because uh, the Eagles, you know, I was kind of talking about those guys the other week. And they're not really an album band. Like uh, I, I've I've listened to some. I've I've liked them, but they're more. I like their singles and stuff like that. Like more of a song to song basis. If I could just mix all the songs that I have and put them on a thing, I'd listen to that as an album. So yeah, um, I'm more of an album dude as well. So, uh, segue challenge. All right, let's get swept away by another topic. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we could only assume that those are lyrics or something. <laughs> That's a, yeah, it's a, it's a song title, Swept Away. Okay. <laughs> Classic. Classic Avid Bros. Um, okay, well, I, I believe I'm next. So let's go with... Um, let's go with my love. Uh, it's not as strong as I remember. Like, I was like, oh, I finally get to talk about this. And then I started to <laughs> think. I'm like, well, uh, I like a good title uh, just from a writer's point of view. If I'm trying to work with, uh, you know, do a project, 
it really helps to have a title there, a, a title that works, that helps me, you know, just bring up all the themes or whatever it is I'm trying to do with a good title. Um, so I was going to write about that, but then there's names. There's like really cool names. Um, I think that alliterative names are just for some reason a weakness for me. I like when it's like, uh, wow, I can't even think of one. You know, Holly. Donnie Darko. Yeah, Donnie Darko. Yeah, that's cool. I like those names. It, it seems like a cheat to get to my heart or, you know, for me to appreciate you, you know. What was the cute ones have the uh, alliterative uh, names? Um, I've gone to, at first I didn't care for Vincent Cloud because I'm like, what's, you know, no one's called Vincent. Why can't it be called a normal name like John or Dave? You know, it just, Vincent always seemed odd and it's kind of weird for me to say and whatever. But now I, I like Vincent and Cloud. Like those are cool to, for me as a name. So I'm, I'm into it. Um, I've also realized that um, I really like the name Wesley and variations of it. I had a cousin that I looked up to. Uh, his name was Wesley. Um, Wesley Snipes is cool. <laughs> you see uh, that 30 Rock episode with Wesley Snipes? No. There's like this like really like goobery British guy. And his name is Wesley Snipes. And he's like, honestly, like, if you think of me and Wesley Snipes, who do you think better fits that name? Oh my gosh. No, I no, I didn't see that. Um well uh Wesley. Oh, and then um one of my favorite characters on Angel and Buffy, I guess, uh is uh Wesley Wyndham Price. He was he was awesome. Uh, and then my favorite challenger on the MTV, the challenge is Wes Bergman. I love that guy. So I've, I've just always really liked that name and people with that name. Um, and then uh, again, going back to titles, uh, like a good song title is Wait, always I, I could great. talk about Wes, Wesley for a, a bit. Yeah. Uh, All right. Isn't his name in the princess bride? Is it Wes Wesley? I want to say. Oh, wow. Sounds right, yeah. Um, Wesley Willis, the the musical artist. Um, look him up. Um, <laughs> negative. Um, when I worked in tech support, one of our really big asshole customers was named Wes. So that that comes to mind for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I've never had a bad run in with a Wes or a Wesley. So maybe that's where I'm coming from. I don't know. Uh, oh, but uh, uh, cool titles is sweet, um, like band names, songs. For instance, uh, Champagne Supernova by the band Oasis, and I love that band name, Oasis. That's perfect for me. Like, I remember being lit one night, and I'm like, Champagne Supernova by Oasis. Let's check it out. It's great. Um, everything, uh, the movie by Woody Allen, which was based off a book, uh, everything you ever wanted to know about sex, but were afraid to ask is a great title for me because it's so wordy <laughs> and like, I, you know, and that's kind of like how I feel about a few Goldilocks bears. Like it's supposed to be silly and it's all supposed to be like a parody or whatever. Um, I just am thrown off because the first episode mess like i hate it mm, i hate the title so i'm like I, I always felt like i had to defend the title and i'm like well if i have to defend it that means it's not good so i don't know <laughs> <laughs> um dr strange love or how i learned to stop worrying and love the bomb is another great extremely wordy title and i like the movie um Okay, and then this gets a little obscure here. I like the term interim champion at the for the UFC, where they're like, if you're a champ, there's an actual champ, but he's injured, so you guys are going to fight for a belt, but it's the interim belt. I just like that word, interim. It sounds way cooler than it, what it is, you know? Um, I like that a lot. Uh, oh, God. Uh, what do you guys say? I got a lot more to say, but what do you guys say? Well, as as we know, I've I've talked about how I hate 
titles that are just somebody's name. You know, Not Donnie like Darko. Donnie Darko, <laughs> Barry Lyndon, etc. Um, but some cool titles, Everything Everywhere All at Once. I think I called that one out as just like, that's a really cool title that makes you want to watch the thing. <laughs> Um, that other one. <laughs> oh my gosh. I think Dave's gone. Oh, real quick. I love Morningstar, the weapon, that name Morningstar. If you put that beautiful name and associate with that horrible weapon, it's fucking crazy, man. Uh, <laughs> for, for the record, the Morningstar is... You know, it's often confused with the mace, which is a the mace is a stick, and then at the end is a ball with spikes. That's a mace. The morning star is a stick, followed by a chain, and at the end of that chain is a spiked ball. Uh, you know, so it's horrifying. It's a it's a deadly, sickening weapon. But the fact that it's called the morning star is like, oh <laughs> shit, that's fucked up, man. Uh, yeah, more titles and names guys what do you think uh, so like for me my favorite like names and titles that i think of is like i think of like pro wrestling where like a great wrestler always has like a great name and like the best wrestler ever to me is stone cold steve austin because <laughs> it's his name but then you know you got the moniker you know is stone cold and it can work you can call him steve austin or you can call him stone cold and everybody knows who stone cold is <laughs> just like that name and it's it works freaking perfect um like pro wrestling has a lot of cool stuff like that there's and there's you know there's a million different wrestlers but there's like the popular ones where you have like hulk hogan and then there's Hollywood Hulk Hogan. Um, like the and like that's one of the complaints about more modern day WWE is how they've kind of gotten away from that. And they just have more like generic names like Roman Reigns. And you're like, yeah, Reigns, like he's r the reigning champion. I guess it's kind of clever, but not really. And then there's like Seth Rollins. I love Seth Rollins, the wrestler. Oh yeah, but it's sure. like it's a terrible name. Like yeah. it's just it means nothing to me. Um, yeah, there's like Drew McIntyre. I love him, but like that name does nothing. And it's like they didn't even like at least Steve Austin. Steve Austin's boring, but if you put Stone Cold in front of it and you give it <laughs> that good title, then it makes it great. So like. I don't know. It's one of those things where in wrestling you can tell like it's very easy to discern like the good names from the bad names. If you can like I don't know. It's you know it when you see it. Dean Ambrose the Lunatic Fringe. That's an ah. awesome name. I like that. Yeah. Uh, Kurt Vonnegut uh, in his books has a fictional author whose name is Kilgore Trout. <laughs> <laughs> which I Love for some reason. Whoa. Uh, for some reason that incites Coneheads to me. Beldar. <laughs> 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 oh, uh, a great title for a, a, this book. Uh, I s still got to read it, but um, Savage Pelicidor. I've always loved that fucking title, man. Oh, so good. Oh, there's a band um wisconsin band and their title is a um what is it called uh uh when you could spell race car backwards it's still race car what is that called a Polo palindrome palindrome their name is if i had a hi-fi and for me i'm like that works so good because they're <laughs> they're you know they're a punk indie like very you know small garage band and the wish of like if only i had a hi-fi you know that works sonically or whatever um yeah that that really matches what they're all about um also also um john and i we we had a little sketch group growing up and i love the title of the smut buffs which is basically just sunday monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday 
but it came from a funny friend of mine who was like looked at the calendar he's like what's smut wolves <laughs> and i was like that's an amazing name <laughs> i'm taking that so i don't know there's there's so much good stuff um i also really like unusual names like no offense guys but john dave <laughs> those they don't uh i'm, I'm sorry i picked it <laughs> They just don't inspire me or anything. I don't know. They're the, neither are your your last names either. It's so weird. Whereas I love mine. So oh wow, amazing! <laughs> Somebody loves their own name. Well, do you guys love your name? Yeah, I like I'm mine because it's, it's it's a little bit different. Like it's not super common. I'm glad I'm not like a Smith or a Johnson or. I mean, I think we all have like you know fairly unique last names where it's just not a you don't know a bunch of people with the same last name yeah that's true that's true uh, just more the first name i don't really care for like i cringe whenever i have to say dave <laughs> <laughs> see i i love like common names like that because i really hate people who just have like weird made-up names where it's just like that's not even a name like why did your parents call you that like and it's I don't know how to pronounce it. And then I don't he's like, know I'm how sorry, I'm it. from India. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Um, well, oh. like if if you're yeah, if you're foreign, it's fine. But it's like for like <laughs> the people, and your name is like Nevea, and it's like, oh, it's heaven backwards. It's like, oh my gosh, you can like audibly hear me rolling my eyes. Like, oh, I don't care. Holy shit! Uh, we owned a dog. That was called Natas. And our neighbor's like, oh my God, that's Satan's spell backwards. <laughs> <laughs> and oddly enough, that dog did attack my sister and we got rid of it. So oh, oh, maybe it's oddly enough, that dog was a hellhound. <laughs> <laughs> that hellhound is a fox. <laughs> oh, I'm um, love... doing the okay. genealogy stuff. Um, I've come across some pretty cool old names like. Apollonia. Ooh, yeah. But then, like, when she came to America, she went by Anna. I'm like, no, like, go, go with the, the full thing. Is that Godfather? Yeah, it sounds, it sounds like a dessert or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll loan you an apple. <laughs> oh, uh, it, again, going back to the UFC, um, and I've told Dave this plenty of times because I fucking smoke and I don't remember. Leota Machita. I love that fucking name. He's like this Japanese Brazilian dude. He's fucking cool, man. What is it? Leota Machita the Dragon. That's his yeah. fucking name. That guy yeah. was awesome. Yeah. He's a, he was a, one of the greatest fighters ever and one of the most badass names. And anytime you like see him, he's always like the same karate stance. And he's just like he's just got the coolest face ever. He's like <laughs> this guy's the best. I love him. I've met plenty of or well, enough um, attractive women who are like Bianca or like variations like Ivanka. I don't know for some reason is I'm always like oh that's a hot name and usually the woman that has it is pretty hot like nine times out of ten. Um, a good oh. category of names is. Like, if your last name is a noun, then you should name your kid Harry. So, like... Um, Harry in, Cloud. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> we had a customer whose name was Harry Doctor, which was fun. Harry oh. Doctor? <laughs> Wait, his last name was Doctor? Yeah. So doctor, you would, that Harry bit, Doctor. Yeah, that bit of, like, <laughs> Doctor, Doctor. <laughs> you know when doctors greet each other, doctor, doctor, doctor. Wow. In uh, Cats twenty two, there's a character called Major Major, <laughs> and they would never promote him because of that. <laughs> major, major. Oh man, but yeah. See, I love love a good name. I I was gonna write way more, but then I don't know. It seemed weird. And then this name, like I can't name some uh, names of exes, but they've had some really awesome fucking names. 
I mean, uh, well, I guess I can. Uh, one of them had the last name Powers. That's a fucking awesome last name, man. Was Austin first name Powers. Whitey? Austin P- Whitey Whitey Powers. <laughs> wow. Wasn't that in Mystic River? Yeah. <laughs> and it was a black dude. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, so weird. But yeah, I that's like uh, the name was like from Django Unchained or something. I'm <laughs> like, I don't remember this name. Uh yeah, I don't know. That's all I got. I mean, I could go on, but whatever. Seg- segment Segway challenge. Um, uh, the next segment of this amazingly named podcast: a few Goldilock Bears. Is next. <laughs> all right, I'm going to continue to copy you and go with my love, which is walkie talkies. Um. Even though, like, I mean, they were especially fun when we were kids, and it was like, whoa, this is like a way to talk to people mobily and at a distance. Like, that just didn't exist any other way. But even now, as an adult who owns a cell phone, it's still fun to use walkie-talkies. On my camping trips, when we're canoeing sometimes, we'll bring walkie-talkies along. And so we can like communicate at each other with from the one canoe to to another, and like it's legitimately useful for um, you know like oh you go up this way, scope this campsite out. If it's taken, let us know, and we won't come that way. We'll go a different way. So like in that sense, it's actually useful. But more so, it's just fun to like come up with like uh, dirty sounding code names and just babble at each other and break a ricker and all that stupid shit. Like it's just a fun time. You can't have a bad time with walkie talkies. I don't think I've ever, like I wanted to have fun with walkie talkies. I don't think I've ever gotten to. Um, so all I can do is do the bit or mention the bit from saving Silverman. <laughs> with Jack black is like, <laughs> like do you just go? <laughs> it already makes that noise. You don't have to do the. <laughs> He's like, got it. <laughs> <laughs> he's in the uh refrigerator <laughs> yeah. uh dave have you uh, dave have you ever <laughs> used the walkie talkie over and out uh affirmative uh yeah like walkie talkie like we did the same stuff uh like on fishing trips when i was like a i don't know when i was like 10 or 11 uh my i would go with my parents and then my like uh grandpa and some of my uncles and we would go to fishing trips in canada and on the way up we would be in separate vehicles but we'd have like the cb radio and we'd be talking to each other and we'd like we'd be in like northern minnesota and international falls and we're sitting in the line to cross the border and you know that like I would assume like border patrol, there's probably someone like listening to all the channels for security reasons, I would assume. So like, but we're still free to talk about whatever. So they, and they don't know which car it's coming from, but like my <laughs> uncle and my dad would just start talking back and forth and they'd have like the perverted nicknames for each other. It was, you know, this is Jack load one, the Jack load two. <laughs> He's like, huh? I'm, He's like, I, I've had about all I can take. I'm ready to get rid of this load. And just like super perverted stuff like that. <laughs> or like once we're like waiting in line at the at the border, it's like, oh, we're all backed up here, Sarge. Uh, if, if we can at any moment get some movement, it's like, I'm about ready to blow. And then you'd be like, oh, here we go. And then also once the line's moving, you're like, and we're going, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> and just like stupid stuff like that where you just, you know, what would be a normal, like boring drive. It turns into something like really funny. And it's just like weird memories where like, I don't remember at all what was being said, but other than like, there was lots of like, uh, you know, jack off jokes and lots of poop and <laughs> fart jokes. And to like a kid who's like 10 or 11 or 12, that's like the funniest stuff in the world. But as opposed um, to now, where oh, wait, no, it's yeah. still the funniest stuff in the world. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing funnier than farts. 
Um, like another time we would use walkie talkies. Um, we'd go to the Mall of America when we were younger, and like you'd never had any cell phone reception like back in the day. I don't know how it is now, but like back in like 2003, 2004, like your cell phone would not work inside the Mall of America. But people figured out if you had walkie talkies, you could talk to each other. So you would see random people in the Mall of America like, hey, where you at? Eh, I'm at the Banana Republic, you know, like <laughs> uh, I'll meet you over, you know, on this floor or whatever. And it was a great way to communicate because otherwise, if you're in the Mall of America, like you you had to have like a meetup point like, hey, we're going to meet here at like the Lego at the end of the Lego City place. And then that way you had like a common place to meet up. You had to do that because without walkie talkies, but with walkie talkies and it's like, Hey, uh, we're going to go over here and then we'll meet you over here. And it was great. And it was a great way to communicate. Um, trying to think like just as kids, I always loved walkie talkies, but I don't know that I really like actually use them other than like, you know, just going in the other room and just like talking a little bit and then getting bored with it in a few minutes. I always envied like the kids on like movies and stuff who like lived close enough to each other and they had walkie talkies in their room and they, they'd be able to chat with each other. Yeah. I remember like on Home Alone. Didn't he have some walkie talkies? Did he? I don't know. He, well, yeah, talk the, to. I don't remember, but like <laughs> he, I swear he had a walkie talkie or something when he was like going to like that rappel line that went out the window to like the tree house. Oh. I swear he was talking on a walkie talkie or something. I know he but, had like, like that voice recorder. But... Well, that was yeah. in two though. Okay. Hmm. Oh, yeah, shit. I'm like not the voice recorder. I remember that, but I swear there was like a walkie-talkie or something. But it, like, I don't even. F he might have just been doing it for like for fun or something. Like he was talking to someone because there was no one. Or maybe him like faking them out that like, oh yeah, they're coming. Uh, oh like yeah. Oh yeah, that's what he was doing. He was faking. He was pretending to be like a police officer to fake out Marv and Harry or something. They're like. We're at so and so drive. We're on the way, and then they got a little paranoid or something. Yeah. So, so cell phones being everywhere hasn't taken out the the love for a walkie talkie. Like, do you think you could pick one up again and be like, "Oh, this is just more fun than a cell phone"? Yes, it's definitely more fun. Yeah. You can use it sporadically. Um, it's uh a one-to-many communication or many-to-many -many communication. It's not just point-to-point. -point. Um, otherwise, you'd have to like, hold on, let me uh, let me get all three of the people in here, and it's not the same. That's true. I think the teachers uh, at the high school I worked at they had they had walkie-talkies, and it was just convenient, a nice little, you know, they'd be like, oh yeah, what's going on? So. Yeah, they are cool. It's just, I'm trying to think. I think I might have bought some really cheap-ass walkie-talkies from, I don't know, from the Benjamin Franklin or something like that. <laughs> you remember that store? Oh, yeah. Uh, but again, they were super cheap, and I, I think they had a really weak signal or something. And like you, know, like you said, Dave, eventually you're like, hey, hey, you're on the other side of the house. Cool. <laughs> After a while, <laughs> what are we going to say? <laughs> you know? Is that yeah? You kind of run out of ideas for the for the walkie talkie, the limited walkie talkie. I remember I used to work at Target, and everyone at Target would have a walkie talkie. So, like, if a guest comes up to you and they're like, "Hey, do you know uh, what aisle are like bed sheets in?" And you'd be like, mm, "I'm not sure. Let me ask." And then you'd be like, and then you'd ask other all the other people who work there. But what was hilarious is you had to be, like, very formal, and you couldn't, like, joke around that much, mm -hmm. which was, like, the downside. <laughs> However, you would be like, hey, go to Channel 2. And then going to Channel 2, it's a little bit more relaxed. <laughs> and some people, like, Channel 2 was, like, the people who would work in the back of the store, like, stocking stuff. They would use that channel. So there's a lot more leeway because there wasn't, like, uh, you know, customers around. But... 
I remember one time someone's like, Hey, go to channel two. They go to channel two. And then they're like, yeah, I got this lady. She's looking for uh, a certain kind of like laundry basket, but it has like a lid and it's full. And then the person's like, yeah, I it was, I was, I had somebody looking for the same thing earlier. Yeah. She was crazy. Like she's, I, I don't know what she's talking about. And the person's like, I'm with her right now. <laughs> like stop insulting her. Oh my God. She, and it was just like, oh, no, no, it, it, could, so it couldn't be the same lady. Th this lady had a really fat ass. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, seg Segway challenge over and out. <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, Dave, I think. Uh, I. Let's see. I don't remember if I hate it or if I'm indifferent to it. <laughs> I oh, I know. Okay, I I am indifferent to the standard versus like metric measuring systems. Um, so like I remember in like the '90s when we were in school, we got told by all our teachers, "Well, they're gonna they're gonna move everything from standard to metric." Like we're talking about like feet and inches and pounds but that's all going to be kilograms and meters and centimeters like we're all going to go that way because the entire world does it that way and america's kind of set in our ways and we've been doing this for so long but like we haven't changed and so like i was conditioned since i was a little kid like yeah okay we're gonna get rid of that and we're gonna do something different <laughs> so like i'm fine with it and now like as an adult um like in the medical field everything is always like metric like everything is measured in milliliters or kilograms um or you know measurements are in meters like your height or weight um any kind of medication is always in a gram or a milliliter like that's what you do for everything and it's it's so much easier and better that way that like the fact that we're like how many feet are in a mile? And I'm like 2,400 or 500 and Wrong. something, something like, like, <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I'm never going to get it right because it's uh, just... my wife is always asking me like, how many ounces are there in like a quart or a gallon? I'm like 64, uh, eight, 128. Eight, eight. Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. It's, I don't know. It's the standard stuff is really pointless. And I've heard like the theories on it is because like, well, Ford Motor Company, they use standard measurements for all of their tools and their vehicles. So they don't like the politicians don't want to upset Henry Ford and all those people by changing how they do all of their mechanics and like their repairs on all these vehicles. And I like that. I guess that made sense for a while, but that doesn't really add up anymore because like very little manufacturing is even done in the U.S. And the stuff that is is usually made with foreign parts, and all the foreign parts are metric. So I don't know. I feel like we just need to go metric. Like I'm indifferent to either one, but like I feel like there should be just one. And since the entire globe other than us uses metric let's just use metric it just makes sense yeah on the other so i agree and like i do get annoyed by our system a lot of times but i also get annoyed when foreigners make fun of us for using it it's like <laughs> wait a minute hold on <laughs> like this is my little brother only i can call him dumb <laughs> yeah oh, okay. a little protective yeah <laughs> Oh, I thought I and thought I, they I were making the... fun of you for for trying to use metric or no, something no, no, like no. that. No, 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 they're making oh, fun okay. of American <laughs> for using non-metric. But then, like the the standard response for that is there's a map that shows countries that still use the non-metric system and countries that have successfully landed a person on the moon, and it's the same map. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> 
Uh, I looked at a map similar to that. It was just like all the countries that use metric and then all the countries that don't. And then there was just, you know, the United States was the one that didn't. <laughs> but I like that version where it's like countries that have landed on the moon, allegedly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Is so. Uh, I feel like we might have discussed something yeah, similar we talking to about this. Celsius and Fahrenheit. Recently. Oh yeah, no, no, that was off camera. I think that was like before oh, we okay. recorded. I think, yeah. So was that? Oh, wait, that's a, similar. That's. I mean, yeah. That, so basically, um, Celsius is metric in the sense that it's based around like physical things, like the boiling of water and the freezing of water and stuff. Um, but in my opinion, it's less useful for describing just temperatures that humans exist in you know like a hundred is really fucking hot zero is really fucking cold and everything else is like something in between whereas like zero is in celsius is kind of cold not horrible and a hundred is like we'd all be dead <laughs> <laughs> i do love the futurama joke it's from one of the early, early on, they're they're on the moon, and this farmer is talking about how the temperature drops down to minus one seventy three, and Fry says Fahrenheit or Celsius, and he says first one, then the other. <laughs> okay, so are we? I think with that though, I asked, is metric right? Like, is it more? You know, you it's, know what I mean. It's way better for science because they're they're all related. I think a lot of them, like with water specifically, like um, like um, a a milliliter is like a cubic centimeter of water. If yeah, I was correct. gonna say that. Yeah, yeah, because I've and, learned that because like I've seen someone label something as a cc. And I'm like, no, it was a milliliter. And they're like, that's the same thing. And I'm like, really? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, it just blew my brain. And I'm like, that's crazy. Yeah. And like, it's all like that. Like, um, and now I can't even remember which is which. It's like calories and there's joules. I don't know which one's metric, but essentially one of them is the amount of energy it takes to heat up one milliliter of water one degree celsius and that's like how they figured out what the the unit of energy is so like they're all related in a way that makes sense and makes like doing like physics calculations way easier okay yeah because that that's kind of like how we were saying oh 13 months makes more sense than 12 or something like that so it's like even though we use 12 it's actually better to use 13 so if um could could america convert or do you think it's like we're far too fucking up our own ass now and like this here's america god damn it you know are we too dug in i think they easily could but uh, i don't know yeah, i don't know I, I don't know who the holds outs are <laughs> um I could easily see it becoming a partisan issue for whatever weird reason. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. It definitely would be. It would be a partisan... It would... I don't know. Because everything always ends up being that. Right, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> and it's weird because, like, I remember at, like, the beginning of COVID, some people wanted to, like, lock stuff down and some people didn't. And I, for, like, two weeks straight... I was like racking my brain. I'm like, what side, like what political party is going to pick which side? And I would have like debates in my head. Like, I don't know which <laughs> side's going to pick what. And then like, okay. And then it all happened. I'm like, all right. Like I really, I had no idea. Cause I was just like, because it, I don't know, everything's so contradicting. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, se segue. Challenge. Uh, Give a man two and a half centimeters and he'll take <laughs> 1.3 kilometers. <laughs> that was pretty damn good. <laughs> Not the right. scale. 
<clears throat> okay, I think it's uh, back to me. Let's do my... Okay, so I'm indifferent to snoring. Um, I just have to say that I didn't snore before. I believe I didn't snore before, but then... You know, old Vincey, who likes his McDonald's and his pizza and his beer and stuff like that. So I've gained weight. And I've heard now that I do snore. Um, so that's, you know, you don't, you don't like snoring if you're sleeping and you're sharing a bed with someone or a room with someone or whatever. You know, you're just like, Jesus Christ. Like, you, you hear, you know... It's maddening the uh, pattern. You pick up on their their snoring pattern, and it just repeats and repeats <laughs> and repeats. You're like, oh my god, this is terrible, this is horrible. But they can't help it, you know. I mean, for the most part, I don't think anyone could really help it. Uh, so I don't want to be angry at those who do snore, but I also hate that I do snore now. So I don't know. What do you guys uh, say about snoring? You're a self-loathing snorer. <laughs> <laughs> I can't take it any s'more. Snore, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely only snore when I gain weight, it seems like. And if I lose weight, then I, I stop again. I, I'm a pretty sound sleeper and can get to sleep pretty easily, so snoring doesn't tend to bother me. Um, there have been situations, like, on the camping trip where there was one guy who is just a notoriously bad snorer, and he'll actually, like, camp farther away oh. from the, the camp <laughs> as a result. So there was, like, one time where just where he was, his snore was, like, echoing off the water and coming back a different direction, and I'm like, is there a bear out there? <laughs> like, it sounded like a like a bear snorting and like rooting around and stuff. I'm like, oh no, no, no that's just that's just Chris snoring. Sounds like a lumberjack with a chainsaw. <laughs> uh, do you do snore, Dave, or no? I do not snore at all. Like I sleep very silently. So do you? How do you know do. that though? How do you know that? Because my wife told me so. Oh, oh. okay. Right, like, on two levels. <laughs> she's awake uh, 24 hours a day. And... <laughs> yes, uh, she wakes up every morning before I do to make me breakfast. And then she uh, she tells me if I snore and she's like, good job, sir. Here's your sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, I will snore under one condition. If I drink a lot of alcohol, I will snore. I've heard that from people. Um but I don't drink that often, um, like maybe a couple times a year. So, um, I, I don't really know. I've never like had a significant other who snored. I've had like I lived in an apartment once, and like I was in the lower level, and the person who lived above me snored. And I could hear them because like the apartments are set up the same. So the bedroom is on top of the bedroom and they're above me and I could hear them snoring every night. And it was so annoying because like I had to always have the TV on or music playing. I could never just fall asleep in silence. There had to be some noise going on because otherwise, if I just laid there in silence, I'm just hearing this stranger i've never seen the person i have no idea what they look like but i can just hear their snore and it was <laughs> it was maddening it was i don't know so that like i just learned to always have the tv on um always be always have some music going i think there's a device that was invented where it's almost like a mouth guard you place in your mouth and it kind of like moves the jaw so it opens up the palate or something like that so it's it lessens it or something i don't know but that's cool it just would suck to have to like put in your bit you know like a horse yeah. <laughs> my wife will only snore if she has like a cold or something and then like when she wakes up i'll be like oh hey there snore baby how's it going and she'll be like no i didn't <laughs> <laughs> like just denying it <laughs> See, no one wants to be a snorer, you know? 
that's that's another thing that kind of sucks. I mean, I guess you don't care if you're by yourself. Yeah, but I don't know. It's just an unfortunate thing that happens to people. What is it like? Um, yeah, there's another reason why people could snore. Like without gaining weight, you have like a thing. Fuck. I don't remember what it's called. Is it like sleep, sleep apnea? apnea? Uh, I don't know. I don't, I, I really don't know. But yeah, it's too bad. I don't think. Yeah, it's too bad. More devices. Maybe, maybe there's a pill in the future that we could take to stop snoring. <laughs> uh, who knows? But yeah, that was snoring segue challenge. Um, oh man, this topic is a real snore. <laughs> uh, John, All right. I'm finish out with my indifference. Finish out myself, of course. So, so not everybody. <laughs> You know, we do this self thing all the time. We've never told Dave what that's about. <laughs> no. Maybe he'll uh, figure it out himself. Oops. <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> Real quick, Dave. Uh, we had a friend named Jesse, and we were filming a skit. And I think we told him, hey, don't walk into frame because we're, you know, we're not filming you right now or something like that. And right. And it, see it you, was. Right? We were filming in the quick trip with like the actual cashier who like very nicely agreed to do it. And we're like, we don't okay. want to bother this poor lady. We can only do this once. You know, don't fuck up the scene. Yeah. Go ahead, bitch. And so Jess is like, we caught him at the tail end of talking <laughs> back to us. Like, well, make sure you don't mess up the scene yourself or something like that. But <laughs> what was captured on camera was just the quick cut of him saying, you're so funny. Like that in the background. <laughs> we were doing, yeah, we had a shot. You just hear him yourself. So, so for some reason, we've been paying homage to him. And so if you if you hear us randomly say, yourself, it's that. That's all that is. <laughs> Are you uh, implying like a go fuck yourself on the beginning of it ever? <laughs> no, no, it was just it okay. was just Jesse talking back in like I don't know. It was... It's just one of those like it's become like a an instrument in a song or like a a sample from a song. Like it's just like <laughs> the noise of him saying yourself has just like become its own thing, basically. Yeah, okay. just with the two of us. <laughs> All right. Um, shit. What were we? What were? All we right. Doing? I am indifferent. I was. I first said regifting, but I decided to open it up. I'm kind of indifferent to the the whole idea of gift giving in general. And I'll say when um, I have friends that I exchange birthday and Christmas gifts with, and it's great because um, they really actually do a good job of knowing something that I want and might not actually buy it myself. So, and, uh, <laughs> um, I, I like to think I, I also do a good job for them and that it's a, a net benefit doing it. Um, they've done studies that have shown typical gift giving is usually a net negative in like value so like basically i'll go and spend 30 dollars on a gift for vince and he would have only spent 20 dollars for it if he sounds was right buy it. <laughs> yeah <laughs> um so it's kind of like money being wasted whereas you know if i gave him 20 bucks he would have bought a 20 dollar thing that he actually wanted um and Regifting, I'm definitely a fan of because I would much rather a thing that I poorly gifted to someone finding a new life with someone else who might actually be using the thing. And I would want to, I would want there to be open and honestness about it that, like, oh, yeah, you know, like I just found I wasn't using that thing. So I gave it to someone else and they like it. Like, I think that's great. Um, I don't, 
I feel like it is like a negative thing though. So I, I would be afraid to do it for something that someone gave to me. Cause I, I could understand how, how feelings would be hurt by it. Um, I, I just gotta say really quick, I'm very bad at gifting or, or just, I don't even think about it. And it's, <clears throat> it's really super nice that someone has thought about me and bought me something, you know, like, but then I start feeling bad. Cause I'm like, I don't, I didn't get you anything. I've never given you anything. Like I, I don't know if it's selfish. Maybe it is. Maybe I'm just very selfish, but I just don't think of giving people stuff um man like birthdays i've i've stopped doing that i don't know i just feel like i'm a bit of a crab ass or something because i just don't think of it i don't and I, yeah i don't look down on you for that because like we we used to do i used to do gift giving with like my parents and sister and stuff and we stopped doing it during covid and it was like a big relief for me and I imagine like a relief for them also that like um it was fine doing it and like I tried to do a good job but yeah it, it's definitely stressful and feels like not worth it a lot of times um I, one thing I, I've learned to do is like you just try to keep it in mind the whole year so for example, like just a couple of weeks ago, I was at the store and I saw a book that I like, oh my, I think my friend would really like this. His birthday is not till December. So I'm like, oh, I'll just, you know, throw this in a drawer and hope I remember it then. And, you know, go from there. Um, I, I have, I have given gifts, but I have, I have stopped, but it is it is that moment, you know, when you run into something, you're like, Oh, you instantly think of someone, a family or friend. And you're like, they would love this. It's yeah. I just, I don't know. I, I feel like I should be doing that way more. Uh, I, I don't know. What do you, what do you think, Dave? Uh, like I'm okay with like gift giving when it's like you and your wife or husband or boyfriend or girlfriend. But like outside of that, I don't like gift giving at all. Um, like like with parents and like sisters and like uh, like we're adults here and like every christmas we're always like money's tight this year let's not give gifts and everyone's like yeah okay we're not going to give gifts but you know that they're all going to give gifts so it's just like i got to get them something so then you try and like okay what can i get that's super cheap that's like I have like a million nieces and nephews. I got like a dozen of them. Mm -hmm. So it's like, I can't spend like $20 times a dozen. That's hundreds of like, no. So it's like, okay, maybe we can like make our own crafts or something. Like we'll make Christmas ornaments with their name on it. So you try and like buy stuff in bulk and make something. Or I think my favorite gift is probably just like cookies like baked goods i think that's like it's good i love getting cookies myself it's something that i'm gonna eat and i'm gonna love it but it's you know it's not like that crappy gift where it's like you know a, a weird t-shirt or some like useless item that you're just never gonna use or hold on and re-gift um, oh, I have a great re-gifting story. My sister once got me this, uh, it was shaped like a shotgun. It was a toy shotgun and it had a plunger on the end. So it was a plunger slash shotgun. And when <laughs> you pulled the trigger, it made like a shotgun blast and a toilet flush noise. <laughs> and it, it had some stupid name on it. And I was like, this is a hilarious gift. It's really funny but I'm never going to use it. And like, what the hell am I going to do with it? Like, I'm not going to use it. Do I just throw it away? And I was like, I'm going to re-gift it. And I literally carried it with me for like four or five years until I had the perfect opportunity where it was like, we went to a Yankee swap Christmas party. And it was like, that was my gag gift. Cause I was like, I've been carrying this around forever. And then it ended up going to Brooke's cousin 
and it was hilarious like i like we were dying laughing because she was super upset that she got that because she wanted <laughs> something different um so it kind of paid off but like overall gifting it just kind of sucks because yeah it, it costs money and it seems like a waste you're probably not going to get anything you want like the only gifts i like are probably cookies but like sometimes people are bad at baking and then they give you bad cookies and then it's like then you just end up throwing them away but like cash is great like yeah cash is like the only <laughs> gift i want but I also, I don't want to give ca cash to anybody. Like, I don't have that kind of money. So, like, yeah, give me your cash, but don't expect it in return. I have a great... Yeah, my sister and I exchange the same amount of cash for our birthdays, and it just seems so pointless to me. <laughs> I, I do that with my sister, too. She sends me 40 bucks, and then I'm like, thank you, that's way too much. Thank you, here's, here's 40 bucks. bucks. <laughs> Um, what are you gonna say, Vince? I have a perfect tagline for that plunger. It'll let's shoot the shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah. Uh, oh, uh, I, you... I also try to be a, a good gift receiver and like yep. try to make myself seen using the gift in the future by that person. So like if it's a t-shirt and I know I'm gonna see I'm like, oh I'm gonna wear that shirt or gonna bring the thing and use it like um and i feel like that often didn't happen for me so i'm like oh did they hate the shirt or whatever uh dave you mentioned yeah. your your you know nieces and nephews like i have you know a bunch of nieces and nephews and so when it comes to like christmas time you know I'm like, do I just buy one product and like, hey, that's for the whole family, you know? And I end up not doing any of that. <laughs> but <laughs> like you want to, I don't know, I want to be a more present uncle, but I, because my uncles were not at all, but I'm, it seems like I'm just repeating the whole fucking thing. But uh, yeah, I would like to gift more. I feel like I, sh I should be doing that. Yeah, I think, like, most importantly, it's just time. Like, if, as long as, like, you visit them and you, you try to, like, create, like, a little moment with each of them where you kind of give them a little attention, like, that's the best thing you can do. And I'm, like, I'm as guilty as anybody. Like, I feel like I, like, I have, like, nieces that are in their, like, they're teenagers now practically and i feel like i barely like know them and it's i don't know i feel like a terrible uncle that sucks um i think i don't know like with the gift giving thing like john you were saying like trying to be good at receiving gifts i try to do that but i like i failed with it because uh my wife got me uh a meta quest like a oculus yeah the, like the VR, vr goggles and like i love the gift is like it's so cool and it was like a great gift because it's something i would never buy myself so to get it as a gift is amazing so i'm like oh this is super cool i would never buy myself this but like i don't use it like hardly at all because it's like you have to put the goggles on and then i'm like shut off from everyone around me so i don't ever want to do i don't ever want to like play games on that if i could play games on my nintendo switch and i can be present with the person in the room with me it's a little better um so yeah i haven't really used it that much and it, you know it costs like 200 bucks and i feel terrible that i don't use it uh, oh, you're gonna say you you use it all the time, but you never let her see that you're using it. <laughs> <laughs> she can't know that I enjoy this. Yeah, you apply fake dust on it. <laughs> like, yeah, I haven't used it. Put some Halloween cobwebs on it. <laughs> uh, segue challenge. Let's give our listeners the gift of another topic. <laughs> yes. Is that to me? Uh, yeah, I think so. Oh God, this you're is our like closer. Most, this, this is the worst topic <laughs> and the worst thing to close on. Let's talk about something we all hate. 
uh, this last segment is brought to you by complaining. Um, I hate the five day work week. Um, it's the worst, you know, only like a standard, like work shift is five Monday through Friday and you only get two days off a week. I hate that. It's so stupid. Um, full disclosure. I only work four days a week. I have three day weekends and it's still not enough. <laughs> like t- today's Thursday, but it's also my Friday. I've I'm done working my 40 hours and I'll have Friday, Saturday, Sunday off, which is great compared to the alternative, but it's still, it's not enough time off um, to kind of like live your life and do stuff you want to do. Like any day that you work, there's so much stuff that you can't accomplish just because you spent time driving to work, being at work. Like the second you get home, you're like, oh, I need to eat food. And then I'm like, oh, I need to clean this laundry. I need to do this. And like, you're just trying to like maintain your life. You don't have time to like, hey, I want to work on like, you know, I want to like go kayak in a river or something or go to the park. Like maybe I have time to do that, but I probably only got 45 minutes because I got all this other stuff to do. So it just, it just takes away everything. It takes away from everything in your life. So you're just at work and like your work becomes your life. And, you know, there's a few jobs out there where you're like, yeah, my work is my life and I love it. But that's maybe like what, one or 2% of most jobs, most jobs, Like, I'm just there for the paycheck. Like, I just do this so I can have a place to live and afford a vehicle so I can not have to walk everywhere or bike everywhere because that's exercise and I don't like that. (laughs) (laughs) Um, And, like, like the five-day work week, I think they say it, like, was started by, like, uh, Henry Ford, who owned, like, the Ford Motor Company, and he wanted his employees to work you know, five days a week. Um, and I think that was like, at least that's what like the kind of the, like what you read on the internet, it was Henry yeah, Ford and all his fault. To be fair, wasn't, wasn't the alternative before that, like six and seven day work weeks and perhaps you know, like, yeah. and like, wasn't it like unions who were able to get it down to five? Oh like god, that. that was a compromise. Oh man. <laughs> yeah. They should have done better. <laughs> I like do, in Europe, don't they say they like they only work like four days a week and usually it's uh it's like thirty-five hours or thirty-four hours. I think in maybe yeah. like France or something. I yeah, remember. I mean having worked in tech support where our overseas support was in Germany. It certainly felt like they were working 35 hours or less per week. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) And then, like, everyone gets off, like, two months in the summer. Yeah, you get vacation time, like, all the time. You're just like, all right, here's... Mm -hmm. And, like, I don't know. I, I get vacation time. I'm very lucky to get PTO. But, like, we don't have enough staff to actually take time off and have someone replace me. So, like, if I'm gone, we're just short a person. And then it just makes everybody's life miserable. So, it's, like, very taboo to, like, take any time off. Um, wow. Uh, we're referencing uh, Ford again. Weren't we talking about the whole metric standard thing because of him? Oh, yeah, that's right. Wow. Yeah. Oh, shit. He's, he shaped a lot of America. And uh, he also... Anti-Semite owned... was very influential. <laughs> oh, was, oh, is he? Oh, man. Yeah. Didn't they make that movie Ford versus Ferrari? Did they address those issues? <laughs> <laughs> Never so. watched it. I only watched the sequel, Ferrari. Or prequel, maybe? I don't know. The one with Adam so Denver. I'm guessing Ferrari <laughs> won? <laughs> uh, oh, uh, so I do not work a five-day work week. I started this maybe a year ago where I just work on the weekends. I work nights overnights and they're like fucking 12 hour shifts or whatever. It's not too back breaking. It's kind of like a security job or whatever. So I have five days off. And so I do feel the pressure to be like, you 
better be doing something. <laughs> you know, you better be doing something with your goddamn life. So, um, uh, I don't know. It depends on if I th think this board game I'm working on is going to work or, or, you know, these little projects that I want to do. Other than that, like I, I should be applying myself way more with these five days off, but yeah, I don't know. I, I didn't care for it then. You know, it's, it's time, uh, precious, precious time. Um, yeah. Yeah. I pretty yeah. much like in my professional career I've only had like the, you know, normal five day work week or whatever. But I've been salaried, so, um, you know, you're always kind of encouraged to put in the extra hours or occasionally if stuff comes up on the weekend, you have to deal with it and that, that kind of stuff. Um, but on the other hand, it's very flexible that, like, if I want to fuck off at, like, 10 in the morning and go do stuff and come back at 2 in the afternoon and, you know, finish stuff up later, it's never a problem, which is really nice. Um, but if I had my choice, I would do four tens or even, you know, three thirteens or whatever it would be. Like, I would love to work, just cram all my work into as few days as possible and then have more free time. Um, just like the metric system are we so set in the five day work week? Could we change? I don't know. Like you would think that with automation, making everyone's jobs easier and um, AI and everything else, like you would think we could be like, well, you know, we're getting the same amount of work done with, less people putting in less hours like let's you know let people have more private free time but i feel like a lot of people are um like their identity is how many hours they put in and how hard they work and and that stuff and um i feel like obviously like the companies themselves don't want to pay people the same amount of money for doing less work and I, I think even individuals i could see a lot of people putting up a fight to it for some reason even though i'd be all for it yeah i don't think it's gonna change because like when covid happened and everybody started to work remotely and from home that like a lot of companies realize that like oh this person is in the office for eight hours straight but now that like once they're at home, they're actually doing their eight hours of work and they're finishing it in half the time. They're doing it in four hours. And they're like, oh, this could be way more productive this way. But it like there was talk of it changing, but then it like never materialized. And now it's just like back to the status quo, like go to your job, work eight hours. It's like, but I don't know. Like if you incentivize people like, like, hey, if we can just do all of this work in Monday through Thursday or something, like, people will rise to the challenge. But if you spread it out, they're going to be like, well, I'm at work all the time. I'm just going to coast and just do, like, 70%. Yeah. I'm not going to give 100%. Yeah, the, the work will fit into whatever container of time that you put it into. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, I say we punch out. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, subscribe. Better be getting overtime for this episode. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, really. We, wow, our podcasts are getting so fucking long. It's crazy, but that's fine. Um, uh, unions, <laughs> we need you. <ya. laughs> uh, like, subscribe, comment if you're on YouTube. Uh, go to a few goldilockbears.com. Tell your friends, tell tell people. Uh, we, you know, I'm not, not ashamed to say it, but uh, I would like more views on this thing and more clicks and stuff. So, yeah, there you go. Uh, I was Vincent Cloud. I would like more listens.
and more five-star reviews. And I can't wait to hear what Dave wants. I'm John Nemitz. I uh I'm actually an introvert and I would prefer that no one listens. So no if you could if you could just you know keep it on the down low, nobody needs to know about this. Thanks, guys. If you see someone with this on their phone, slap it out of their hands. <laughs> uh wait, I missed that. Did Dave, did you say your name? I don't even I don't even think pick. I said my name. Oh, no, I just Lauer, said don't tell you? anyone about this. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this is David Lauer. Uh, keep, keep it on the down low. <laughs> oh, you're you're like one of those people who are like, I like the band before they got popular. <laughs> when they're just exactly. playing in dive bars and shit, barely scraping by. I used to like the Killers before they were ever popular. Oh, really? I thought they were like popular yeah. from their first, from the jump. That's what I thought. Kind of. They were on Conan O'Brien, and I saw them on there. And like Conan was like this debut album, but it wasn't until like two months later they were all over the radio. So there was like a two month period where I knew about them and nobody else, unless you watch Conan <laughs> O'Brien. Uh, going back to the names, um, don't like that. Don't like the Killers. Yeah. Also, I don't like Imagine Dragons. Fuck them. That's a horrible <laughs> name. I don't know, <laughs> dude. There, there's a TikTok creator, and he does good name, good band name, and bad band name. Wow. And he just goes through bands, and he just says whether they're a good name or a bad name. And I almost <laughs> always disagree. Like he'll just be like, <laughs> "The Rolling Stones, bad band name." And I was like, "No, that's pretty good." Like I don't I know. like it. Yeah. Okay, but it's well, a cool concept. Yeah. Well, the. Yeah. Let's let's leave. Let's stop this. <laughs> All right. <laughs>